Jackie from Bronx Bubbles and I'm bringing you another exciting uh, video. This video is part of my A Bronx Tale series. This is where I go into my vast costume jewelry book collection of over 250 books and counting and I pull out a book and I give you a sort of mini review. This is just basically my opinion and I just want to bring these books to you so that if you're interested in being a vintage costume jewelry collector and if you're interested in adding vintage costume jewelry books into your repertoire as a source and resource, um, then maybe this will help you guys decide which books you want to purchase because these purchases of these books can be quite expensive. And so I'll save you some of the trouble of buying books that maybe perhaps if you looked into it and you saw a little bit of what the content is, either you'll be excited to invest in or perhaps you might pass for another day or another book. So without further ado, let's get this video started. So today I'm going to be reviewing a book called Jewelry by the Artist in the studio from 1940 to the year 2000. And this book is on the Daphne Farrago collection, which is housed in the Museum of Art in Boston. And here's a little bit snippet of Daphne. It says, Daphne Farrago has amassed an extensive collection of international artistic jewelry with consummate skill. And this book is just an incredible, incredible collection of art pieces. This book was commissioned by MFA, uh, which is the Museum of Boston, and it was printed in Italy of acid-free paper. They took exquisite care, unlike my bunny rabbit that chewed a little bit of the side over here. And um, the authors of this book is Kelly H. Lerier, I'm gonna to have to put these names down on my description box below. Michelle Tolini Fillimore, Yvonne Markowitz, and Geraldine W.R. Ward. Um, this book is not your traditional book where you look up values and, and pricing and things like that. This book is really more of a resource book to inspire you to look at art jewelry. Art jewelry is different than mass-produced jewelry because in mass-produced jewelry, there's multiples of the same necklace. And in this case, these tend to be one-of-a-kind, artisan-made. And sometimes there's meaning behind it. And sometimes it's commentary on what's happening in politics uh, in that era that it's made in. And these are made to be worn as art pieces like you would in a museum. But instead of it being up on a wall, it's on your body. These are pieces that are made to adorn your body. And sometimes they're very delicate and dainty and demure. And sometimes they encompass a whole entire outfit, like a complete you know, a neck piece and into flowing dresses or pieces that go up your arm and they're just art to piece. These are the type of pieces that I look for in thrift stores and flea markets and yard sales. These are the pieces that I covet the most because I love the sculptural nature of these types of jewelry. And when I find pieces that I know are one of a kind, I just go bananas over it. Um, I love the sparkles and I consider myself a sparkle girl in a diamond world, um, but these are the pieces that I dream about. And if I was a jewelry maker, which I'm not, I'm a collector, um, these would probably be the pieces that I would wanna make. These artist sculptural pieces. These are the pieces that people, perhaps if they're not jewelry connoisseurs or don't know a lot about jewelry, these are the type of pieces that they might pass up thinking it was made by a little kid or, or, or an art project in school. But these are the pieces that I love the most. So let's dig into these, this book a little bit. As I flip through these, this book real quick, you can see some of the qualities 
of the, the, the pieces that are made here. This, I just love things like this. This is something that is in the shape of a pencil, but that they made into a bracelet. And these are pieces perhaps that maybe at first sight, you don't really know where they're going with it. Um, but <laughs> for some reason, I just, I just love pieces like that. They're abstract pieces. These are the pieces that if, <laughs> if I ever came into some money, these are the pieces that I would invest in. The Art Smith, the Alexander Calder. Oh, they're just tops in my books. Take a look at this piece. This is a piece that I recently found, very something very, very similar to this at a thrift store that is gonna be featured in one of my next videos because I pulled it out for a video. And I just fell in love with its simplicity, the African nature, it's almost ethnic-like, but you can tell that they're just one-of-a-kind pieces. And look at this. This looks like an Alexander Calder. Yep, it's an Alexander Calder, and so is this one. These are the pieces that I will sell my left arm to get. And in fact, I just recently uh, read that Alexander Caldora lived right here in the neighborhood that I lived in right now, and that just tickled me pink. I can't tell you how excited I was to find that out. I mean, oh, this is my jam. This is the jewelry that I go just goo goo gaga over. And this book is filled with pieces like this. Now, one of the complaints about this book is that there's a lot of text here, and the text is just very descriptive, and I'm a visual girl. I like to look at these books and get inspiration by the pictures. And sometimes I go back and I read the, the, the text, um, but um, some people complain that the information on the text wasn't as um, useful. I, I enjoy reading it, I do. I didn't get a chance to read this entire book. I read snippets of it. As I said, I like the visuals. These are from famous, famous uh, jewelry designers. Uh, this is from Art Smith, who was uh, an African-American jeweler in New York City. Oh, look at this necklace. <sighs> I've seen this necklace and I'm telling you, it's one of my dreams come true to own a necklace like this from Art Smith. And I just, I just, uh, look at these pictures. These uh, pictures are not for the person who is interested in that blinged out of uh, jewelry books. Um, this is not really a reference to tell you how much things are going to cost. This book I can see as a reference for students who are sculptural art jewelry makers who want to get inspiration from the past. That's who I can see really enjoy this book. And people like me that have a incredible affection for this, this type of jewelry. Um, and when I was first starting in my jewelry world, um, I was, wasn't into this sort of jewelry. I, I thought that this jewelry was, you know, just too avant-garde avant for me. And as I mature and as I, you know, start, you know, building my collection, the, these are the jewelries that I really aspire for. This right here um, is a gyro bracelet and it sort of collapses and then opens up to something like this, a little bit more sculptural. This is one of the pieces that I was describing to you before where it's body art, pieces that are worn like pieces of, of sculpture onto your body. They're living and moving as you move, it undulates. As you move, you capture different, uh, uh, it, it just elevates jewelry into its highest artistic form, which is sculptural. But sculpture that's, that's living on you. They're simple, yet just sophisticated in nature. And uh, I love whimsical things like this. So if you're interested in a book that has over 150 colored pictures of jewelry 
that's avant-garde, that's modern, that's mid-century, that's timeless, that's one of a kind, this is your book. If you are aspiring to be an artist, to be a jeweler, uh, and you're interested in creating unique pieces, this is your book. And so if I had to say whether you should buy this book, um, I don't know what the cost was for this book. Um, I would say this is a highly collectible book to add to your collection because this book is on modern, one of a kind pieces of jewelry that you just don't get a chance to see on a regular basis. Um, I mean, look at this. This is typewriter balls and they made an incredible necklace out of it. This tickles me because I love recycled and repurposed jewelry and I did a video recently on that. Um, I have a link below. This is so beautiful because this is beading and beading is probably one of the most ancient forms of jewelry that was made. Um, the jewelry that's in this book, most of this jewelry uh, comes from recycled pieces and repurposed pieces. This right here is such a moving necklace. I grew up in the 1980s in the South Bronx during the crack epidemic and this artist, Jan Yeager, took these crack vials that she found in the streets and she made an object of beauty out of it. And when you look at it, it doesn't look like anything at all. It looks like just plastic necklace. But to know that these are crack vials, if you were part of the crack epidemic and saw what I saw, this piece is a moving piece. This is the type of jewelry that can bring you to tears. Like it's almost doing for me. And the colors are the colors of the African flag. This jewelry is jewelry that moves you. It's just wearable history. Can't believe I got so emotional. Brought me back to the 80s. This is such a fascinating book. For people who love jewelry like I do, who appreciate it, who appreciate the history, who appreciate the inspiration, who appreciate taking art to a higher a level, a level that moves you to tears like it did to me. This book is definitely a book for you. So, I mean, I'm just going through the pages here. And if you purchase this book, you can take this book and read it and get inspired by it. This, this, this is great stuff. Really, really good stuff. I have a necklace made of this. Um, this is from a Japanese sword. And the way they make this is incredible. And if you see one of my museum videos, I talk about this particular piece of jewelry, how it's made, fascinating stuff. This book is the type of book that I stay up at night and going over and over and over again. So, this is not a book that teaches you how to do it. This is not a learning book for, for those people who want to know um, how things are made. This book is to give you inspiration on how to create one-of-a-kind pieces um, and the designers behind it. That's what this book is for. This is a cocktail book that you can keep out on a cocktail table. This is the type of book that I would perhaps give to a jewelry maker to get inspiration from. This book is for those jewelry aficionados, connoisseurs like myself who appreciate jewelry as art and history. And, and, and so, do I recommend this book? Absolutely. Gorgeous, 
gorgeous pictorial book with uh, so many gorgeous, incredible pictures. Um, and I love it. And I hope that you do too. Let me know what you think about this book review and how I can improve it. So I started painting. I never took a painting class in my life. I don't even think I took an art history class um, in college. But I love art and I love museums. And about two years ago, when I was in John's house, he had the most incredible light that came into his um, um, house. And I just picked up a paintbrush and some paint that my daughter left behind, and I started to paint. And so I put it away for a couple of months during my grief, and I decided to take it back out. And I'm starting to paint again. These are part of my Latina, Chica Latina series. And this one is just the base. I haven't even finished it. And I'm going to be bringing you guys um, some of my artwork um, so you can take a look at it and critique and let me know what you think. These are just, you know, they're very childish in nature. They're very cartoony. There's no realism to it. It's just whimsical. Um, and I'm so inspired by color and by certain artists. And in this case, I'm inspired by this famous artist, as you can see some of the, the colorations I got from it. Um, I don't sell any of my pieces. I don't sell any of my jewelry. I give them away to people that I love. And this one's already claimed by someone and I can't wait to finish it. And I'm gonna start sharing some of my artwork with you. So let me know what you think of this, of the, the book review and of my artwork and give me some tips. Let me know what you think. I'd be really, really interested. And because you guys are part of my tribe, you're part of my community, you're part of my familia. And so I wanna hear from you. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this book review as much as I did looking through these books. I am loving this and I hope you are too. So if you are, just remember, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. If you want to pass me on to some friends that you think might be interested in the things that I do here, I'm gonna expand my, my content a little bit. Y con tanto amor. Bye, ciao.